2021 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting for the Town of Northfield Finance Committee will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. A record of the meeting will be posted on the Town of Northfield website as soon as possible after the meeting. Hey, so uh, there's something come on here now saying this meeting is being recorded by the host or a participant. Yes, you're being recorded. It's okay. That. Okay, so tonight our first budget discussion will be with the uh, library, discussing the library budget. And we have uh, a new librarian that we'd like to meet. And I see John McGowan doing his usual duty coming for the budget. And Lloyd, these are trustees of the library. So um, I'd like to have the finance committee. There are six of us, but uh, well, five of us may be here. Uh, introduce yourselves uh, to Misha. Jack? Hi, I'm Dan Campbell. Okay. Dan Campbell. Hi, Jack Spanbaugh. Uh, Hi, Jack. Bernie Parada. Hi. Hi there. Sue Kaczynski. Sue Kaczynski. Thank you. And I'm Lois Stearns. And you, your name, did I pronounce it right? Yeah, it's Misha, yes. Okay. And uh, when was it you came on? First, um, I've been here since July. All right. yes. Okay. And uh, we have copies of your budget. Mainly what we do in these sessions is that we go over and we, we look for justification for any increases in the budget over the prior year or any changes to that extent. Uh, we do not give you a decision tonight, yes or no whether we're recommending it, we have to. We want to see all the requests and see how much money we've got to apply against those before we make our decisions. So go ahead and present what you want to tell us about any increases you have or anything else you want to discuss with us. Okay, thank you. Um, so the overall increase to the budget is simply the state requirement every every year the state requires the library budget to increase by a certain percent um, so the bottom line is just that that increase um, there are changes within the budget mainly because deb the previous director made more money after being here for so long than i make now um, so so that money has been moved around within the budget. Um, the biggest increase that you'll see is to the materials line. Um, yes. So that went from 19,500 to 30,000. And I put that much money into the materials because in addition to the MAR, which is the municipal appropriation requirement, that's the yearly increase. There's also the MER, which is materials expenditure requirement. And that is that we spend a certain percentage each year on materials, which is books or online materials for the library. Um, and we, the town allotted material line has been far under our requirement for the state. So that requirement for next year for fiscal year 23 is gonna be 31,515. So putting that budget line up to 30,000 gets us much closer to that requirement. Okay. Um, otherwise there's small increases. Um, there's an increase to the electricity line because the cost of electricity has gone up. There's an increase to the a small increase to the telephone bill line because I noticed that it's almost $50 a month. So that times 12 is 600. Um, and then the water bill, the same thing, the, the cost has gone up. So I increased that line a little bit. Um, yeah. Otherwise it's just um, two supply lines. So the office supply and the maintenance supply 
Um, I increased the office supply because we're doing fine on kind of daily needs, but if we ever, you know, need to buy a new printer or something like that, it, it gets tight. So I increased that line um, by 400. Otherwise, there's no changes. Do you have any questions? Oh, actually, there's an increase on the CW Mars line, which yeah. that's a membership for the CW Mars consortium. Yeah. And Did they, they go up and then. It did go up. So it, it goes up a little bit each year. Um, this year was a little bit bigger. They've increased their, um, their, their Libby, which is um, eBooks and e-audiobooks that we use through them. And so that has gone up. And so they tell us that cost ahead of time. There's no negotiations, it's the same cost for every library our size, so. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, I notice you've listed the Franz Library. That's customary. Uh -huh. uh, how, do you have any arrangement with them about when they will request their money, or do you? You don't have it go through you, do you? No, I think they request it directly from the town. Yes, because I noticed this year's hasn't been taken yet. Um, I am in contact with the director there. I can. I can ask her about it. Okay. Yeah. And maybe they just need reminding to don't okay. forget to get it while we. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they can use it. Yes. Uh, all right. Uh, John and Lloyd, do you have anything you want to comment on? Well, I'd just like to thank Misha for doing. I mean, she's only been here less than a year, and she's doing a bang up job. Uh, and she's got this pretty good shape. Even I can understand what she's figured out here. So that's good. All right. That's good. very good, John. Lloyd? Well, just the other thing, I would echo what John said. But also, I think Deb had to kind of pull from different sources to meet that requirement. Yeah. And we, we are required to do this, you know, that materials requirement. So she was pulling... I don't know, robbing Peter to pay Paul or something like that. I'm quite sure how she did it. But with with this increase, which has been approved by all of us as trustees, we're so much better off and it's a perfect time to do this. Yeah. Maybe she, maybe there was a gift account or something that she took it from. She, yeah. she pulled from various places. The, the friends did some, the gift, like small bits from, from different accounts. Um, some from state aid, which... <clears throat> which state aid is what we get when we meet that requirement. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Lloyd. In, in other words, we weren't deficient all these years or anything. And um, we were, so last year, the past two years because of the pandemic, the state has not required oh, yeah. that, that um, the MER, the materials requirement. So she was under those two years. But other than that, I no, we've, we've kept our our requirements and our certification from the state. Right. Okay. Very good. Uh, any finance committee members <laughs> have questions? I'm just saying, even with the uh, overall uh, increase in some of the areas, you actually only went up about $1,900 because of the uh, decrease in the uh, one of the lines. So I think this is a win-win situation for us. So. Yeah. So the the bottom, like the bottom line, the seven one. 178 123 you know that's assuming that the cost of living will bump us up over our requirement by the state right they don't have their cola in there yet i'm just doing the cola worksheets the last couple of days so that that is going to go up with yeah the new cola so, so there is still a gap between what i'm asking for and that requirement but the cola will will cover it i'm sure yes now we ask that no one include the COLA when they put their salaries and wages account figures in. And, but some do just to nudge us a little bit, I guess that's all right. Uh, so I don't think you have included a, anything for a COLA. I did not. I included that's the okay. only salary increase is, um, is Matt Atwood. He, He's yeah. due for a step increase, but I didn't include the cost of living. And that's yeah. a that has to that'll be computed based on the new factor of COLA. So I don't even I mean, but it yeah, I, I, I estimate I did it on yeah, it was an estimation. Yeah. But it'll it, I'll have the number in there. 
we voted a 6% COLA for this coming year. Wow. So as Andrea said, that will, they'll have to go through and apply that to the whole wage scale. And so it will be granted. All right, any other comments or questions? I hope you like it here. I do, thank you. Good. That's to, up, I would just... to sum up my yeah. understanding here, you're only asking for the minimum required by the state and how it's allotted within that amount is more or less your management decisions. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I would just like to say, just to pull a plug, I mean, this Northfield Library has one of, it, it is probably the best library in all of Franklin County and people come from everywhere, including cross state. So we're, we're really pleased with uh, the way the library is run and we could not be more pleased with Le Misha's leadership. She's terrific. Yeah. Good. Very good. Uh, I sort of call it sometimes the social center of the town. That's right. Really, with a, Deb used to have, and I'm sure you've continued, a lot of interesting programs for all ages, which is a great benefit to the town. Yeah, and even outside the programs, it's a place for people to chat and hang out, and they do, we're always busy. <laughs> yeah, that's good, fine. And I understand you provided uh, good service during the pandemic and still doing that of meeting people outside or exchanging the books uh, in, Mm -hmm. on a box out front, all those things. Very, yeah. very well received. All right, if that's, if no one else has anything. De um, Andrea, did you want to ask any questions? No, I, I think I get it. I will send it back to Misha. I've been working on the master spreadsheet, so I have um, broken it down to everybody's salary. So I will backfill for her and send her back her number. Um, but I'll, I'll probably let her know what everybody's numbers are. So she'll understand what with Matt's salary and everything when when I have it, which is what I've been doing for the last day. All right, great, thank you. See you soon. Okay, well, thank you for coming, all three of you here, and thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good nice night. meeting you. You too. Okay. Nice meeting everyone. Bye bye. 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 See you guys and hey, ladies. Okay. Thank you. Now uh, we have Skip coming in at 6.30. Um, we're probably, this is early for him probably. And then, then we'll have the uh, committee on the anniversary turn on 50th coming in after that. No one is available yet, are they, Andrea? So why don't we do the minutes right now? I sent those out. They look good to me. I second it. Okay. Motion made and seconded to accept the minutes of January 31st. Any discussion? All in favor? Dan, Dan, aye. Dan Campbell's uh, aye. Jack, aye. Sue, Bernie, aye. Bernie. Sue, aye. I'm aye. It's, it's unanimous. Um, this is another night that Beth has a conflict. Her uh, daughter is into sports over at Pioneer, and of course she wants to be at the meetings. So uh, we have the she has the record anyway. All right. Um, <clears throat> just let me know, Andrea, when they sh when Skip shows up. Uh, then what we received this past week was the budget balances that we get. And I sent that out to all of you. And we can discuss any questions you have. Uh, one thing that uh, Bernie has questions, and 
you can ask or I'll tell you what it's about, Andrea. It's showing expenditures and the building maintenance person is under public works and facilities. And there was an amount of 43,000 appropriated, but only 900 has been used. So I know that they uh, take it out of the highway money when he's working for the highway department, but has somebody not realized that when he's doing maintenance on other buildings that it should be charged there? I've had this conversation with Tom. I've, I've told him that the budget for that position is 100% budgeted in that line item. And regardless of whether he's plowing or not, I would prefer that he actually takes that budget line item out of there. I don't know why he's continuing to do that. Um, I know that we are working on, and I have to get have a meeting with him. Um, I do have a department head meeting this week. I have select board tomorrow night. I have various meetings. So Tom and I are, are that's why he's towards the end, because I need to meet with him. I'm looking to redo how he reports on his salaries. Um, in the past, he has put some salary for winter in his chapter 90. Um, I think that that is not good. I think that your salary winter roads should be listed. If you notice when you look at winter, winter roads or snow or however it's listed there, I don't have mine with me. I didn't think to bring that particular document. Uh, there's no salaries listed in winter roads and winter roads should contain your winter salaries. And Tom and I are trying to decide how we wanna do that, whether that means you go into winter roads like say November 1st and you stay in the winter roads budget till March 31st or whether you do it just when there's salary. So we're working out how to show that differently and show that better. And one of the cleanup pieces I would like to see is that the maintenance person moves out of highway altogether in terms of budget money and moves back into their specific budget. They should be in their line item so that we're tracking the maintenance person's salary being paid out of the maintenance person, whether they're plowing snow, whether they're whatever they're doing. Uh, he can include it in overtime for winter roads. If they're plowing, that would be fine and be appropriate. And we will make some estimate. There's a number of reasons to do this. I think, first of all, you should be tracking it that way, clearly for each role in each department. And second of all, because in truth, Winter Roads is the one budget that by law you can overexpend yeah. because of its very nature. And therefore, if he doesn't put any salary money in Winter Roads, he's always going to have to find that money. And that on any given year, um, if he's putting it in his chapter 90, that really can mess up his projects. If he goes year to year thinking, I'm going to do this with chapter 90 and this with chapter 90 for his materials and his road work, but he has a particularly bad winter, he can end up messing up what projects he wants to do in the spring because he has spent the money on winter road salaries, which makes, to me, little to no sense. Um, I think that he should take that chapter 90 money. There's enough road work to be done in the town. Yes. Um, that he should be using that for the materials and the, the that he needs to do the work and that the salary should be clearly reflected for, for non-winter, winter and maintenance in the appropriate line items. And if we have to go over because of the winter, which we will, we will, you know, we will budget a factor. We will budget an overtime factor. It's the best you can do. Sometimes it's, it's you know, it's not spent and therefore you can use it to offset uh, if there's another project that's over expensive, but if not, it should be it should be budgeted that way. I think it's easier to track. I also think logistically you should be allowed to overexpend that line item if you have um, that if you have a bad winter, um, and then the town has options to pay that off with other savings or put it on the tax recap the next year. That's all allowed by law. But I think that um, not knowing how much you can expend every year in Chapter 90 because you're never sure how your winter's going to go. I think that makes for a very difficult, it's put him in a difficult position. And I, I think that in order to make it a lot easier for him to actually budget projects and a lot better for him, he should be using his chapter 90 money for that and not for winter road salaries. Now, does that mean it's gonna probably uh, cause an increase in his request for salaries? Possibly, that's what we're working on now. Now he has some very new workers there. So the salaries aren't as high as they were when he had people who were, you know, here for a long, long time, 
but I do think it's a much better practice. I think it's more transparent for everyone to see uh, and for you to be able to track year to year what's happening with your winter roads budget. Right now, I couldn't tell you how much was expended in winter roads last year. I'd have to pull apart the chapter 90 projects and pull his people out of it and try to ascertain that. I don't think it's trackable that way. And so for the purpose of transparency and tracking and better ability to spend that money on actual road work, I think we need to pull that money out of chapter 90 and actually budget for it. Yeah, so that's I, what I'm working on doing this I'd year. I'd rather see chapter 90 money go for actual work on the roads, maintaining the roads rather than salaries. Right, and, and that allows you to then put all that chapter 90 money into the actual project and not the yes. salaries yes. of the workers. Yeah. You might have to buy, you might have to, you know, did a contractor who's going to, you know, lay some kind of pavement. You might have to use a contract. Those are salaries for a contractor. But for our everyday, day-to-day -day salaries for our workers, we should be budgeting that, not, not yeah. putting that into chapter 90. Now, when you started out talking about... Um, not showing the line. I, and the more you talked, the better it sounded because I want to see that maintenance person's salary on a line by itself. What you're saying is take it out of highway. Well, highway not, has a line for it. Yeah. Yes. You, see the, you don't see the breakdown, but internally you're seeing the total, but internally there is a budgeted line just for the maintenance position. Yes. And I want to and keep that, yeah. but I yes, don't want it. Yeah, this goes back to that whole business of, is it under the highway department or isn't? Well, okay. We want the separate line. We know it's going to be used by the highway department some, but yeah. So, right, and I could see I could see planning his overtime for winter road plowing to come out of highway winter roads. That's a that's fine. That would be appropriate because he would be doing highway winter roads plowing work, and yes. therefore it would come out of that line item. But yes. Um, yes. I, I'll talk to him again. But I, all all of our maintenance positions salary should be coming out of the maintenance position line item if it's not over time yeah. for winter road. I, I don't know whether he's going back to this idea that control over it or not, but uh, I just it think runs his weight. He's it's it's running his wages down when he has a forty thousand dollar line item to put his maintenance guy in. I'm not sure why he's doing it this way. No, I don't um, get I it. I thought we had established not to do that anymore, but I, I will thought. have another talk with him. Okay. All right. That's good. Um did the rest of the finance committee have any questions on this end of the month report and the figures, any accounts that you want to question? Oh, not me. No. No. Okay, sounds good. Uh, but that brings up something else, Andrea. Uh, what's the story on continued paving on Old Wendell Road? Now, you know, we've got two ends to that road. And I guess what the north end is to one person is not that to me. I don't know. Let's, we talk Which about, I, yeah. they don't connect. And as I understand it all these years, it's been a ledge where they would have to connect it. Very expensive and very difficult to do. But there were building lots sold up in there. And don't we have to... Uh, maintain the road for them. So as I understand it, I'm talking about the south end now that goes up from South Mountain Road and it's paved to a certain point. And then there've been houses built beyond that that are facing, uh, that are on a dirt road. And are, are there any plans to blacktop that? Well, it's all one project when you think about it, because you can't just blacktop over the piece that's got ledge in it. You're going to have to go, you're going to have to do the whole piece. He has, you voted $100,000 two town meetings ago. It wasn't this town meeting, it must have been the year before, yeah. uh, for work on Old Wendell Road. And what that's starting with is engineering. And he has signed a contract with an engineer to start engineer. The engineers are going to have to come in and take a look. They're going to have to look at that road. They're going to have to look at the ledge. And they're going to have to assess what we could actually do to actually put roads. And he's having them look at both ends. 
because both ends have to be addressed. And if you're ever going to connect them, then yeah. that's another issue. But at least both ends coming towards each other have to be addressed. So yes, there was a recently signed, I'm going to say November or December contract with an engineer wow. to begin to begin that process to, to, okay. to start the look at what has to be done. Um, okay. To be done to, to, to do the to do further work on Old Wendell Road. Okay. Now I call it. Dan, where you are, I call that the north end of it. Yeah, there. I'm on the lower end as far as doing that. And it is extremely ledgy if you go up past me as far as doing that. And a lot of that land up there was bought as woodlots, and a lot of that land cannot be perked or has not been perked. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, yeah. There, those, there was. I don't know who sold, it doesn't matter who sold, but they sold building lots out there and then the people realized they couldn't get out to them. There was one woman that was ready to bring in a modular home and you never get a modular home out in there as I understand it. Do you remember anything about it, Jack? Uh, well, I know it's, it's a public way and ultimately it has to be made passable. But uh, when I was on the board, there was no one ready to build along the undeveloped section of the road. Yeah. We've, we've had little inklings that there are people looking up there. We've had little inklings that lots are being um, looked at. No one has come in, you know, demanding yet. But um, <clears throat> having said that, he's started the engineering because I suspect that as more and as less and less uh, buildable land is available in any town, people yes. start to look at what is available. And for whatever reason, they did not um, close that road, I guess, when they voted that in 1986, was it? Um, they did not take that road off the books somehow. Um, and if that well, is the case, then... It was a county road, so they couldn't discontinue it. Yeah, right. So yeah, so you'd have to go through the county process, which is, which is a whole nother process. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, so he has started that. He has started with an engineer. I don't know whether they've started yet being that it's February, but he has signed a contract. Okay. Because I saw you. it come through on it on, on, and I'm questioned. I said, this is gonna be out of that $100,000. And the answer was yes, this is part of that old Wendell Road work. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have questions along that, those lines? Um, you know, Skip isn't waiting to come in, no? Let me text. I haven't got a response yet, but I will see. Who's coming in on the 350th? I see he's coming in, or who's going to be in on it? Uh, it it's probably Stacy for sure. Probably Stacy and Brian. Okay. Those are the two executive members. Uh, so I have no okay. Well, we'll just continue on. So somebody shows up. Okay. okay. He's in the town hall. Skip is. <clears throat> oh. Yes, uh. he's at the town hall. Oh, who is Skip? Yes, I don't know why he thought it was. It's, it's was all. It was posted only via Zoom. Oh. Okay. Um, any, anything on uh, people attending readings? Uh, Bernie, anything? 
since last I, week? Um, tomorrow, there is a meeting of the Emergency Services Building Committee, which will be taking uh, place on Zoom at 4 p.m. Uh, in that meeting, we're going to look at uh, doing evaluations and um, uh, discussing the uh, individual ratings and evaluations that we accomplished on, on paper and turned into the town administrator. And we're going to make decisions on the um, who should go forward to meet with the select board so the select board can then award a contract or, excuse me, um, you know, award the bid to the um, uh, contractor they have chosen to be the architect for the uh, facility. Uh, so, like I said, the meeting will be tomorrow at four on Zoom. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> okay. So the hope is that um, that they'll choose a number of candidates tomorrow to interview, and then they'll probably conduct interviews. I think they've decided that they will do the interviews uh, with the select board again, like they did for the OPM, so that they're not interviewing twice. Um, and then from that, and I don't know how many that will be, depends on on what the um, committee yeah. agree, you know, decides looks number of people they want to meet, um, and from that they will choose um, a designer, an architect with the goal in mind to have at least schematic work done. Um, well, people are wondering if uh, that property has proven to be okay for this use. I've heard comments, questions like that. Some think there are wetlands in the back of it and so forth. There, there are wetlands in the back of it, but um, but that, that's all being evaluated. That's another thing that the committee is working on. We're waiting, I suspect in the next week or so, we're supposed to be getting a report. Um, we've had some wetlands work. We had an original wetlands evaluation done, which the board felt left uh, enough uh, room for the facility that they want to build on a portion, a very small, you know, tiny portion in some respects of the entire property, um, leaving the rest of it you know, okay. for, you know, untouched. And yet, and still we've had um, having some uh, work done to further talk about the wetlands issue, to talk about um, uh, grade and those kinds of things. So that report should be done in the next week or two and presented to the committee as well, because you need that work before you can go ahead with the architect to even talk about whether or not a design could be put there, because it's critical to know what you're dealing with in terms of land. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, anybody else have any questions or comments on it? I'm thinking uh, Skip is going to be, he said 10 minutes if he can. He's he running to go home. Yeah. yeah, probably. Okay, all right. Um, Tony called me about 10 or 6 and he didn't have, he couldn't find the invitation. His computer had been worked on this past week and it thought it was lost, so I sent it to him. And then, of course, you saw just after we started, he was you know, on. Like I'm going to just stop my video. I'm going to I'm going to email him the link. So I'll be back. Okay. He's all. I, I sent it and he couldn't get it. I but I couldn't keep talking to him. All right, because he uh, we were looking for a report last week from him on uh, on his committee work and. He called me after the meeting last week. He'd been away and just didn't get home in time. So, okay. Um, you, oh, she's doing that to send it to him. So I'm just gonna ask if she has updates on anything else. And uh, there's nothing else that I know. We'll have these two in about their budgets, but uh, anything else anybody wants to bring up. Uh, I did have a, I did send it out to you this afternoon. Um, what's her name? The anyway, the interim superintendent called me this afternoon. And she said, I sent out emails, but I want to call to make sure you got it, that that uh, school committee budget subcommittee was meeting was for tomorrow night. And she, they're, you know, including us this year, the four town 
finance committees and so forth if we want to go, but they have to postpone it. So that mode meeting will not be on tomorrow night. She said it's going to be three their financial people need another week to be ready with their budget. And uh, she said there will be three meetings and on Tuesday nights, consecutive Tuesday nights, and this will just move it forward into March 1st, I think it is, for those. So uh, it's on Zoom, so you can, either, and in person, so you can do either, whichever you want. Uh, so on, uh, Andrea's setting up these appointments now, this time, which is good. Uh, so I don't You know. should have a calendar. I've, I've sent you, I think with the last um, batch, although I've sent you a general budget sheet, you're probably going to get an updated one because I'm now just worked today, pretty much nailed down um, all of the salary changes. So I'm going to start inputting those into people's budgets. And then I will send you the general master again. But each time before the meeting, I think it's helpful if I just send you their individual spreadsheet. So you're not having to look at the master. Tiny next master. Week. Okay. Um, you have so a, that's why I sent you, you know, the library, the fire department and the 350th, even though, you know. Yes. And the 350th is, it's really came with the capital stuff because it's an article requirement. It doesn't have a budget spreadsheet the way you're used to seeing because it's not, it's a budget, it's a warrant article budget that you're actually being asked for. Okay. And then you don't have a department for it. Yeah. Next week. You've got down the assessors and then town hall and the yards, really, and then the board of health. But uh, Beth called me. And the planning uh, board. You're, you're going a little late next time. I couldn't fit everybody in unless I threw a couple in. And so the planning board will be at 730. Okay. Although I'll ask him to come in a little early because you might be ready for him by 715 or so. So that's 7.30, yep. Wait a minute, that's uh, the 14th. Right. right. And I do have the select board looking at their budget um, departments tomorrow. So okay. kind of have to do some final stuff on the um, health insurance and had to get all the budgets in for the salary because that computes the matching payroll taxes and all those yeah. things. So now the Hampshire group for the insurance didn't go up. No, they had no. No, nope, I just always do a count of how many employees we have versus how many eligible positions we have, um, oh. so that we're always sure that we're not going to um, miss anybody who's now on who we didn't count last time because we always throw in an extra um, yes, if we're worried we about it. Right. And then I want so I can make sure that the budget number is right. And the budget number would only change because we were doing something with the count, not because of, uh, of an increase in the actual um, yes. yeah. cost. Uh, we did not have to change the that percentage. That spoke to me about uh, next week. And did she, I asked her to talk with you um, with her daughter playing sports? She said one game had been rescheduled to, to next week because she thought she was done with the games as of tonight. But she said, but I guess I can't go. And I said, yes, you can. I mean, I said, I mean, you yeah. could be switched around to do the assessor's budget. And we so said I could talk to see if we could move up the planning board if he wants to come in earlier. Yeah. So Beth was going to, I suggested she talk to you about I'll talk to her she didn't say anything to me today and I saw her so I'll I'll ask her this was last week one day so yeah mm -hmm. uh, you know she moves to the next well you've got you could put it in for four for the next week down. yeah I'll talk to her and see if she yeah. needs to change it hey there you did yeah. okay and skip hi skip hello sorry about that well, we are too. You were on a little tour of the town. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little slippery out, but the town hall was pretty quiet. All right. Um, why don't we go ahead? 
with your budget. And nobody had any other questions of Andrea on these things. So skip budget. Everybody should have a copy of it. And yep, you know the the routine here that um, any yeah. instances we want explanations, but I want to ask you one question first. Sure. Um, on the wages, did you put in anything for the COLA increase? I arbitrarily put in 3%, Lois. That's why there's a number there. I know that I know that the uh, the raises are determined by the Finance Committee and the Select Board. I, just, I arbitrarily put put the 3% in. Yes, that's, that's okay. I just wanted to know so that Andrea mm -hmm. doesn't go ahead and add more. We yeah. have voted 6% this year. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, I didn't want her to go on top of what you would so uh, I'll go back to last year's numbers. I compute from last year and I'll have a whole new number. Okay. okay. All okay. right. That's All good. Right. Yeah. You want me to run down, run down the list? Yes, please. Okay. Underneath the wages, uh, salaries and wages is a fire department inspection fees. Uh, I'm increasing that from $3,000 to $3,500. Uh, because as, as inspections are getting more and more numerous with sales of houses and whatnot. And that money is only expended as we collect money in. So um, it's not really, a re it's not a revolving account, but it's like that. We only get paid for the inspections we do out of that, out of that account. Okay. So I'm upping that for 500. Uh, fire station electric, I've level funded. Um, fuel oil, I've level funded. Propane level funded, water bill uh, level level funded that. The uh, hydrant e fee, uh, I got this number from the uh, water, uh, the Northfield Water Company. That's going up eleven hundred dollars. They 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 assess the hydrants that are in the district to protect the town buildings, uh, and that's going up from sixty five hundred to seventy six hundred. So that number is from them. Uh, level funded fire station maintenance, other supplies, fire station purchases level funded. I've gone up uh, on the fire department other purchases, which is um, there's a new method of contacting and, and, and whatnot. Our firefighters is called I Am Responding. It's a dispatch um, mode that actually gives the fire calls to our first response to our fire firefighters by their telephone. And they can also log in if they are responding immediately, if they are going to be delayed or if they're unavailable, which is a, uh, which is a, uh, a, a, a good tool as far as knowing how many first responders we have coming. So that increase covers that the in that cost. We did it on a trial basis. We have it. We have it working right now. We paid for it initially out of our firemen's association just to see if we try it and see how well it worked, and it does work very well. So I'm putting that in the budget this coming year. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. Telephone. Uh, okay, telephone. Uh, I went up. I went up uh, one hundred dollars on telephone. Thought I had level funded that. I was going to level. No, that is level. That's not level funded. It shows five hundred dollars to six hundred dollars. That should be level funded at five hundred. That's my mistake. Um, went up twenty dollars on postage, so I can buy two rolls of stamps. Um, <laughs> office supplies. I, I bumped that one hundred dollars. Five hundred to six hundred. Level funded fire department supplies at seven thousand. Level funded gasoline at 500, level funded diesel at 3,500, level funded fire station maintenance and repairs at 2,000, uh, fire ponds level funded at 3,000. And I reduced the FERCOG radio assessment. Uh, when I talked with the executive uh, director for FERCOG, she said that it's, she thinks it's going to be about a 2% decrease from what it was last year. Um, so I level, I, I didn't, I actually reduced that from last year. It was $4,955. I've level funded it at 45. So that's a reduction by $455 in that. Dues is level funded. Fire department, others level funded. Hose and equipment is level funded. So 
Uh, that pretty much takes care of the fire department operating. Well, um, where do we stand on the radios, the, the whole radio system? The radios, the a majority of the radios have been installed. The rest of the radios should be installed by the end of February is what I'm being promised. Um, we still have a base station. We have uh, three mobiles that still have to be installed. We haven't purchased the repeaters yet because I'm not quite sure how well they're going to work. They're going to come up and test at the end of February. They're going to test the repeaters to see how well they work, especially on the campus. So until that time, I'm, I'm, I have purchased the additional radios we needed, but I have not purchased the repeater units. So I want to see how well they work before I, before I do it. So it's still kind of in pro progress right now. All right. Um, I noticed uh, any reports in the paper, anyway, of fires, there are a lot more towns responding. And is that uh, for tankers, for supplying water? Is that mainly the reason? Uh, well, yeah, it is, it's part of the reason, Lois. The other part of the reason is a lot of, a lot of towns ha are having an issue with getting enough, uh, enough first responders responding. Okay. Where, where it's quite often where, you know, you'd get an engine, you'd get an engine out of a neighboring town and it would have five guys on it. Now it might only have three. Um, we obviously have to have more trucks when we have to tank water, uh, yeah. like the fire we had over in West Northfield. Yeah. Um, so when we, we are not in an area that either has a water supply or hydrants, then you have to call in additional trucks for tankers. So that's, 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 that's part of the other reason. Uh, the additional the additional uh, trucks and those additional departments are are called in. So, yeah. but there's several towns around us that are having having staffing issues. Luckily, luckily we are not. In fact, I just uh, tomorrow night I'm going to be bringing four of my f five new firefighters who've gone through the training, have gone through the screening, and have been uh, been approved by the department. I'm going to be bringing them in to meet the selectmen. So we are very healthy as far as the number of firefighters we have. So we're very fortunate in that respect. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Very good. And yeah, um, now is, I still call it tough Pond over there. Yep. Is that the only one that's got, what was that that the, uh, is it called a it's type of hydrant that's in it's there? A, yep. It's called a dry hydrant or standing standpipe. It's called a dry hydrant. No, we have, we have several of our ponds now have dry hydrants in them uh, that we have installed over the years. And that's part of what we use the fire pond money for is not only is cleaning them out, but also we have added, been able to add dry hydrants to several of the ponds, several of the good ponds. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that issue when that, that one came on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Before I leave the fire department, the only other the only other thing that I had is we were originally going to, in the capital planning, we had we had looked at uh, I think it was one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a rescue truck. Uh, we have have since gotten a couple of quotes on. We were going to try to rechassis the existing the existing rescue body or the rescue box and put it on a new chassis. Yeah. Um, a couple things have happened with that. Basically, there isn't a chassis that that box will fit on that will still fit in the fire station. So we have kind of pushed that off because it looks like hopefully if we get a new facility within the next couple of years, we can probably buy a, a secondhand rescue for a lot less money in a lot better condition than we can refurbish that truck. So the, 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 the department decided that it didn't make a whole lot of sense to try to refurbish the truck if it wasn't going to if it wasn't going to fit downstairs number one and when we got a quote on when we redo the chassis uh we'd have to do some refurbing on it because the hinges on the compartment doors and the locks and whatnot and the wiring is will all have to be done and two of the places that we had looked at one was rose ledge the other was dingy machine up in new hampshire said that even if we refurbish that box it's only going to be probably 10 or 15 years 
uh, of good on it because because of the electrolysis and whatnot on, on the aluminum body. So we decided to hold off and uh -huh. hopefully if we get a facility, then we would be able to easily purchase a used rescue that would fit in the, in the, in the new building. Right now, it serves our purpose. I mean, it's old, it's tired, but it, it still functions and hopefully will continue to function for the next two to three years. Sounds good. And that's okay. good, good planning and on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was on the capital plan. Thing. Uh, Andrea, you? Yeah, and, and, and I didn't put it back on the capital plan because we had decided oh. it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, okay. This, this time. All right. Yes, it, it mentioned this to me before when he turned in his budget that he was going to hold off on that. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? No, I'm good. Or on the fire budget at all? Looks good to me. I, I hope you've all gone and watched the video now about mm. the new building. Have you all gone and watched that? The link is on the front of the website to watch the, for yeah. to see the three facilities. Um, current conditions so skips, skips gotten, is very comprehensive <laughs> yeah okay. we've gotten some very good comments and some and some support back from from that so the the hope from the whole committee is is that uh we get an, enough information out there that everyone will understand and know the conditions we've all been working under and hopefully move towards uh, a new facility it's Yes, I think it's a good idea getting that out and get some publicity. We don't want to repeat of what was it, 2012? No, 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 we don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, the next, uh, the other job you have is the emergency management director. Yes, um, and I'm just, I, I increased uh, last year. Um, Basically, we re, uh, requested three thousand eight hundred ten dollars. This is for the reverse nine one one or the code the code red, as they call it, for the system. They did go up a little bit, so I I, I bumped my uh, appropriation for that from thirty eight ten from last year to two hundred ninety dollars to to four thousand dollars. And then the other fire uh, civil defense supplies is level funded at five hundred. Yeah. Progress. Okay. Uh, I don't have any questions on that. Is anybody else? No. 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 This is not your problem, Skip. But once in a while, I have somebody say, well, I don't know how to get those emergency calls. Well, mm -hmm. it's on the website, isn't it? How to it should be on the website. It should okay. also be on our on our Facebook page. The the applications are at the town hall. So, um, I I would say if somebody doesn't have it or, or wants to know how to get it, give us a call. Sh shoot us an email. You know, shoot us a a, a tech. You know, a, a Facebook message or call the town hall because the forms for the code red are right in the hallway of the town hall. Oh, okay. That's um. I, okay, I don't know why they have trouble. It seems to be pretty clear as to how to go about it. And yeah. Then yeah, I so there's a link on the website. Yeah. If, so, it, but if they don't do the website, then obviously they can do it via the forms. But there is mm -hmm. a link on the mm -hmm. website that says yeah. "code I, red" like a button. A button. Yeah. Okay. And then I've heard uh, compliments for you when there is an emergency or something. And you come on the phone with that. And I've had a couple of people say to me how reassuring it is when they hear your voice. <laughs> so it's, it's the you're calming, believable, I guess. That's it's good. Calming, calming manner that I have, maybe. I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, every, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty well trusted by the townspeople. And, and it is, re, you know, I've had people say to me, Boy, I got your call, and it was just reassuring knowing that somebody was looking out for us. So that type yes. of thing. So, yeah. 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 I think that's a good thing. Very mm -hmm. good. Okay. Uh, and do you have any questions of us, Skip? No, I think I um, think I'm pretty well all set. Just hope, hoping that the the new uh, hoping the facility continues to move forward as we are, and uh, 
And I hope that the, the video and as much, we got to get as much information out there from all, all the parties involved that uh, what the need is and, and whatnot. So we're hoping that that, that comes, comes to be this time around. I, uh, I've heard a couple of concerns. Mm -hmm. I hope that's not going to hold it up. You know, uh, if it's being suitable, that's fine. It's location that's good. It's right near near the center of town and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, I understand the house nearest it is, is going on the market or has gone on the market. It is it is going on the market. Their their son was up and and has basically cleaned the house out. Yeah. Um, and Chris is in a nursing home and doesn't look like he'll be coming out of the nursing home. Yeah. So yeah, their plan is is to put it on the market. Yeah. And I don't I, think it's been put on yet, but it, that's the, that's what the plan is. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Any finance committee members have any questions? I'm good. Looks good. I'm fine. Okay. All set. All right. Okay. All right, Skip. Sorry about the misunderstanding. Thanks. No, nope, no. Nope. So, sorry for being a little tardy, but um, that's okay. I'm I'm good if you're good. Yeah, we're all set. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. You, you too. too. And. Now we have, I see we've got some people on here now uh, that are here about the 350th budget. And uh, Ryan, I know you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Lois. Hi, everybody. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd like, uh, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll introduce Stacy Bond, who is actually the chair of our committee. Hi, Lois. It's nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to see you. And Lindsay McCarthy, who is our treasurer. Oh, okay. Nice so she's nice. looking for the money. Looking for the money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we all have, uh, I'll tell you what the procedure is, why we have people in like this. Uh, we all have copies of the budget that you've submitted. So we know what, what's listed and so forth. And uh, what we do is with our regular departments that are all set up, we mainly want to know if they have any increases and we want justification for those increases. And uh, we don't make any decisions tonight or any night that we're meeting to discuss or receive budgets. We are listening. And then at, after we have received all the requests for money, including budgets and capital accounts, we make a decision. Our decisions are based on how much money is available, whether we've got enough to go around for what everybody wants. So uh, you don't expect an answer tonight. We don't take a vote tonight. It'll be much later on. So that, that's how it works, but this is what we, so we, we have these uh, that you've turned in and uh, whoever wants to go through and explain. Uh, what I did in the last, over the weekend, uh, I'm sure that uh, you've all, you know that there is a report from the 300th committee and it's in the 1973 town report. I. Have you used any of that type of, has that been helpful at all? Yeah, well, actually, I think that one of the things we noticed is that this ask that we're doing is very similar to the ask from 50 years ago, <laughs> as far as the amount. <laughs> I was mainly looking back to see the money that was authorized back then, and uh, I haven't Frankly, I got too interested in reading some of them to finish <laughs> for other items. Uh, there was one for 10,000 and another for two others, I think for a thousand and so forth. So the pattern has been set that 
you know, to furnish money for this. So why don't you go ahead and explain what you have in mind with the budget money? Yeah, uh, if you want to, Lois, I, I have a quick little blurb here just to sort of give you where we're at and what we're doing since we're sort of a temporary committee. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, I so those, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so I just, our goal for 2023 is to understand and honor the past, enjoy the present, and look forward to the future, with our theme being Reconnecting Northfield. We strive to offer events that bring the community together with fun and educational activities such as concerts, art shows, outdoor adventures, kids' activities, agricultural events, and tours of forest trails and historic sites. Um, some of our larger events include a Tanglewood style concert by the Pioneer Valley Symphony, a grand parade and festive fireworks. Um, more ideas keep coming in every day and our focus is twofold, to celebrate the unique uh, town of Northfield and promote economic opportunities for the town by showcasing Northfield's attributes. Um, we have structured ourselves to operate within subgroups called focus groups, such as the parade, historical entertainment, kids programming, religious heritage and community engagement. Um, actually, Joan and Steve are part of our community engagement, but I know they had a um, guest show up just as the, <laughs> the meeting started. So they'll be joining us soon. Okay. Um, and with all that we have planned, uh, there's a lot of organize, organizing taking place, and especially because we've had to do this from the ground up. Um, so creating an accurate budget within the, this fluidity was a bit challenging, but we utilized project planners uh, for each proposed event filled out with as much detail as possible and have conducted pricing research for our general needs. Um, we're very mindful of trying not to ask too much of the taxpayers by carefully maximizing any funding we receive and supplementing the budget needs with a robust fund, fundraising effort. Um, and because of funding cycles, we're asking for the bulk of our budget support this year so that we can solidify our plans. And for so for 2022, we're requesting the support in the amount of $60,000. Uh, we hope that our budget presented to you, you will find to be realistic and thoughtful, and we seek to get your approval. So thank you. All right. Um, so far, as you've stated on your second page here, uh, we appropriate. We started in 2020 with $5,000, and then this past year with 5,000. So does, uh, have you had to use much of that yet? We've used about $800 so far and uh, that has gone toward our website host and um, getting that up and running. Uh, and that's it. We've also earmarked $2,000 for the uh, community outreach committee to do um, some initial mailers um, and get their supplies and things um, so that they can begin to reach out and let people know that this is happening. Okay. I know there's something here that to that extent, I thought it was that type of thing. So, save the date type of thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. When do you, uh, what period of time will be covered by this several? So I, I don't mean from 50 years, I mean a week celebration or three days celebration or what type of thing? We actually plan on um, having events throughout the whole year. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and now you've projected here uh some revenue I notice and uh, that's the that's the figure at the end there 23,000 of donors then uh, from donors how 
how do you plan to go about that, raising that money? Well, uh, it has a, a extensive um, kind of comprehensive plan. I think J Joan and Steve could speak better to that once they join it. But I know that they are going out with several tiers for sponsorships um, from uh, area companies. Um, and then they also have um, different donor tiers for individuals. They're going um, to also... I don't know that they're heading it up, but we're also going to be selling memorabilia items, some of which are being designed specifically for us. Um, and so there'll be some revenue generated from those sales. Um, and then, of course, we'll have some in-kind services which don't amount to actual cash. But oh, here they come. Um, but they, you know, they they do help the the good of the order. Yes. Okay. Um. At, at the um, 50 years ago, they had coins and they had dresses for the women. You've probably seen all of this and mugs, plates, different things like that. Now, uh, I've heard that you're having uh, Tom White do a mug. <laughs> we, we already got people uh, lining up for those mugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom White does a good job. He Gosh, sure does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you want to tell us about it? Or then I'll let the members ask questions if they want. Is there anything else that? Oh, Brian, you haven't spoke much. Do you have anything? Uh. I don't know that I have anything. I, I guess just a couple of things. I mean, we're, this has been fluid. We're still trying to figure out and adapt. Uh, I mean, we, you know, certainly um, COVID-19 was not a surprise to any of us, but I think particularly when the latest round came around, um, you know, in this December timeframe, we kind of had to step back and take a look at what we thought we were taking on and realize that, in some form or another, we're probably still going to be dealing with this next year. Uh, if that's the reality, and that we kind of need to plan, not like we weren't thinking about it, but that we need to be really designing things and taking into account the COVID-19. So we've been kind of retooling some of the activity ideas and figuring out how to move, move more things outside and, and keep them safe, whatever. We're still kind of working on that. Um, and I think that has impacted our fundraising um, projections to some degree, because as we're reaching out, we realize that businesses might be in the different positions than they might otherwise. Um, uh, yeah. I might actually ask Joan if she wants to talk a little bit about where things might be at with the fundraising things. But I know, you know, that they, they, they've tried to be conservative with their projections, just, you know, trying to be realistic. Um, we've kind of actually tempered their their goals down a little bit more again because we don't we don't want to try and overstate that we're, we're, we're struggling with that um there's a lot of things that are at play um but i with that i'm going to shut up and i'm going to let joan talk well thank you good, good evening everybody um hey, i think i would i would really uh echo what what brian has just said uh we have done some retooling and so for example um, we're not talking about specific places that we have solicited so far, but after kind of um, coming uh, face to face with COVID, we have uh, come up with some alternative strategies. And so this afternoon I talked to a company with many um, branches here in uh, the county and offered them a, a major sponsorship, a $7,500 sponsorship collectively. And boy, did they go for that. So, um, so those are the kinds of adjustments that we're going to make. We're not going to, Hatfield started their fundraising before COVID and they got some really big major gifts. We have a different reality now. So 
I, I think this is actually going to be fun to, um, to rethink how we do this and to come up with creative solutions in partnership with companies and organizations. So I would, that's what I would add. I see. Okay. Uh, Deerfield is celebrating in 73 as well, and in 50 years from then, in 23 as well. Am I right? Yes. Right. Uh, is there any anything that can be done by working together or not? We actually have um, uh, Don Campbell, I know, is um, good friends with the chair, I believe. So um, we have briefly breached some communication with them about possibly, you know, some events or something like that, but we're still working on those. Sure, sure. And um, back in 73, there were a large number of slate, floats that came in. They, I think they contacted all the surrounding towns and most all of them had a float, but you don't hear so much about floats now, do you? There will be floats actually, and I think, um, yeah. Well, we have a very energetic parade coordinator, so <laughs> she she's okay. uh, she's on it. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, if if they'll do it, that's fine. You know, great, because that adds to the parade certainly. So, how about finance committee members? Any questions, Sue? No, I don't think I have any questions right now. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm hopeful that we can get some, uh, you know, either some sponsors or get some sort of income to help offset. Yeah. Jack? Uh, on the info we have, you have your difference is 93,000, but it's it sounds like you only be asking for 60 some thousand. Is that, do I understand that right? That's correct. Because we are offsetting um, by what's projected, hopefully that we'll be bringing in for fundraising. Uh, well, do you plan on doing uh, an advance of town meeting some sort of public education or sales pitch so people aren't looking at a uh, an immediate $60,000 number like freak some people out? Yes, Jack, I can answer that. We have uh, our first piece of literature, our, our kind of launch piece uh, will be in people's mailboxes, certainly by March 1st. And it describes the entire, it's an invitation to participate and it's going to every household. And that will also be accompanied by a, an article in the recorder. So they're going to know March 1st, 2022, that this is coming. And hopefully we can generate some excitement. Sounds good. Huh? Media. Okay. Uh, Dan? No, I just uh, wonder what the cost, but then I just, Jack just answered that question. So you're actually looking for $60,000 from us for the, or from the town on uh, town meeting. Yeah. Yes. After the, anything they can raise, yeah. Now, that reduce it by your estimate of uh, what you could bring in. Uh, Andrea? Any comments or questions? Or oh, I've had discussions with Stacy and, and, and Brian, and we're, we're probably getting more and more involved. You know, first they did a lot of planning. Now we're gonna, we'll have more uh, contact with the town, you know, um, as they need more, as they need more information from us. Um, so, I mean, I think that they were, we, we talked, um, we, I had a 
a Zoom call. I guess I was on the phone with them and they were kind of going through all this. And I told them that, you know, it was really good to detail it out as best they could. And I think they did a great job in going to each subgroup and asking them for as detailed a budget. It's, it's hard to do at this point because as much as you're a year out, it's still a year out. So that's really, really hard to do. Um, so it is somewhat fluid, but I think that they really did a pretty good job of trying to nail down some solid, solid numbers the best they can. I recommend it, you know, and they just, and they brought to the attention that they should, you know, do their big ask now. I mean, technically they have another bite at the apple next May, if something were to happen during the year, but really you have to have it all funded and set and people are paid for and reserved and way before then. So you really can't wait um for another year even though it'll be in 2023 because you're going to be putting out all the deposits and purchasing the merchandise which they're going to need next winter so this is really their big bite at the apple if they're going to have things ready to start you know a year from now they don't you know have another shot at it so i mean i think that they're I personally look at this and think that their budget's fairly conservative i don't think it looks outrageous to me i don't know if anybody else does but in terms of planning the amount of events they're talking about, I, I don't think that that's, that's a huge amount of money. They're talking a whole year's worth of events. That's not a lot of money, honestly, for that many events. Okay, um, Bernie, any comments? I hats off to the organizers who are doing the effort. They got probably have done a lot of work and probably there's, they're faced with a great deal more work to get this thing up and running. Um, Jack asked the question that I was going to ask, so I'm not going to repeat it. I just wish you the best of luck. And like I said, I think selling it to the townspeople will be an important aspect of getting this successfully accomplished. Thank you. Well, and, and, and yeah, thank you. And yeah, I mean, I, we're about to do a lot more outreach, you know, within the town and you know, with a, within community organizations as well as out to as well as out to the general public we've already had good um conversations with the historic commission with the library with others um there's going to be a lot of a lot of this is joint programming and with it you know we're some of it is probably going to be funded out of this and some of it is, is some of the individual programs are looking for, for outside funding from other sources i think you know we've got something coming from the mass cultural council um that, that ties into this with this as well. So we're still pulling it together. Um, it's going to be a cooperative effort and uh, it's been a lot of work so far, but it, it started, I think it was starting to get exciting and starting to get fun. I think we're, I think we're going to put together something that the town is going to be pleased about and proud of and, and be able to look, for, look back on when it's over with and say, yeah, that, that was really nice. And, and let's look forward to the 400th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I figured I'd be 94 years old at the the 400th. <laughs> okay, just for the record, I will not be vice chair of the 400th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on, uh, Brian. At the, 50 years ago, they had hired a consulting group that specialized in this sort of event. Uh, do you know anything about groups like, and I don't know how much they cost either. And yeah, well, Carol O'Brien told me that. <laughs> What's that? Carol O'Brien told me that, and and we're starting from the ground up. And I was like, oh my, you hired a consultant. I wish. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Carol, uh, Carol's father, and the high school principal George Leonard were co-chairs of that 300. And she was in her early 20s, I guess, and helped him quite a lot on that. So anything else that you people want to tell us or ask of us? I noticed that B is on here. She's chair of the Historical Commission, as well as a select board member. B, do you want to say anything? I know I blame B for all this. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think they've done a great job. Um, I think you pointed it out, Lois, in terms of um, it's not just a weekend or a week. This is a whole year. And um, 
Brian also mentioned this is a collaborative effort. So the Historical Commission is deeply involved. So Stacy and Joan are on the Historical Commission and they've been working with folks from the Moody Center and the Ridge and really trying to reach out to all kinds of different groups. And we're getting fantastic support to loop this back to the earlier agenda item. We are getting fantastic support from the library. So Misha is quite creative and she and Matt are so good at programming that I think you're going to see a nice linkage between what this group is doing and, and what the library will be doing during the 350th as well. And then the historical commission is just filling in where we need to fill in beyond what these guys are already doing. Okay. I think it's reasonable, you know, to Andrea's point, this is a super reasonable amount. I think it's actually less than what was asked for 50 years ago, and yet it's stretched out over a year. So um, I, I think it's a perfectly reasonable ask. And I think the preparation for the town meeting and letting people know what's being asked and what's going to be done will be critical, but I, these guys are up for the challenge. Okay. I, I guess I will just throw one other bit of clarification out that may not be obvious looking at, looking at it from a budget perspective. Um, there are there are going to be events throughout the year. We're, we're looking at a, a couple of major clusters of events. Um, there's sort of the 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 major kickoff is probably going to be President's Day weekend with sort of a winter carnival type thing. We're still kind of designing that. Um, that's in conjunction with um, uh, First Light Northfield Mountain Project um, down on down at their site. Um, there will probably be other locations as well, but we're kind of focused there at the moment. And most of our attention at this point has been toward the finale weekend, um, which is September 30th, October 1st. That's when the parade is going to be. Um, th um, that Saturday, we're looking to end with fireworks up at the Northfield Drive-In um, and pulling together a number of other activities around that weekend. Um, so there are two or three you know, areas where we're looking, we've got larger events to hopefully you know, bring in some tourism and bring, bring people in. And then we've got a lot of smaller events, all of which we're gonna publicize, but the smaller events I think are probably gonna be more, more regionally focused, you know, you know, area history, those sorts of things that are happening. Um, we're really trying to find a number of things. So there's something for everybody. Yeah, okay. I think uh, what's just been mentioned though about uh, speaking about this at town meeting, at our annual town meeting is is critical uh that's when they decide whether they're going to up, come up with the money or not those taxpayers and so i think uh it sounds like you're prepared getting prepared for that sort of, of presentation and that sort of thing so i think that that'll be good okay uh i don't have an is dan you no, 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 I'm all set. Okay. Uh, if you have anything you want to ask of us at this time, I, I just show me the money. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if we have any other specific questions at, at, at this point in time. Um, uh, we do thank you for your attention. You know, this evening and, and you know we, we look forward to I, I mean i know we've had a number of statements from support from various members of the committee and we we do recognize um all the work that you do and and you know the balance of, that you're trying to do in finding the money to pay for all this stuff and everything we certainly recognize that um uh, if if anything comes up if you have any questions um please do feel free to reach out to us. Um, you, know, you know, you can particularly reach out to Stacy or myself, or I think anybody else who's here would also be happy to chat with you and answer questions. Okay. Um, and if you have anything, please, please feel free to reach out and we're happy to do whatever we can. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Nice One thing though, know. people, someone has thought that there is a time capsule in the town hall in my vault. There is not. Yeah, actually, Dan, I talked to Carol O'Brien. She thought that it was next to the steps 
in the ground Nick. somewhere. <laughs> Nick, oh, exactly. so well, we tore it step, steps down. So uh, there was a plaque or something. She said it was buried under a plaque, and I didn't know this until after I well, spoke with her. Because yeah, everyone's there's a stone plaque right outside the town hall. If it's under there, that's something else altogether. Yeah, because in the in the paperwork from it, it said in the vault. Um, but but Carol said otherwise. So and we can't find the vault, so maybe it's there. <laughs> By the well, way, has the the uh, paperwork that I gave you from my father-in-law has that helped you guys at all? Yeah, I think Magda has that. Correct. Okay. Yeah, he was a treasurer at the time, so it was yeah. dollar amounts in that too, probably. Are you going to see if you can get the Indian deeds on display? It'd have to be Dan's. <laughs> he's wincing at that one. Well, yeah, basically, yeah, they're, they are protecting my vault. Are you talking about the original? Uh, yes. Yeah, those are, I do have them in a the book as far as doing that. They're under plastic. Um, if we could make sure they were uh, maybe in some kind of a case as far as doing that, I guess we could uh, show them. Uh, they're getting very, very hard to read. So I'd be very careful of what light I put them under and stuff like that. So what is um, this again? This is being... the original Indian deeds are in my vault. Oh, um, I can I, uh, probably Misha and I can help you with that. Uh, um, I know that if it... they're not there, uh, Iron Mountain has them in microfiche someplace. Okay. Well, if we could manage to get digital images, maybe maybe part of the thing to do here is get digital images and put them on the website. Yes. If you want to come in and check them out, I do have them. I'll uh, be in touch. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I, I had to come in late, but just um, a question. Did anybody talk about the um, any of the, the historical figures, uh, telephone poles? Any, did There's a poll flag you guys that? put out here, what they're going to be. We didn't talk about the banners. Okay, so there will be uh, banners on some of the polls. We have we have to apply to Eversource. Andrea was helpful with that. I found a great guy at Eversource um, who is going to shepherd the application through. And if we're successful, uh, we will avoid the polls to a great extent where the veterans put the flags up, but there are plenty of other polls that we can use. And there'll be um, banners featuring, uh, 20 banners featuring someone from Northfield who's made an impact either locally, regionally, or in the world. Um, and those people will also be spoken about on the radio in ads called the Northfield History Minute. So in terms of informing the citizens, they'll drive up and down the road and see these banners, not in May in time for the town meeting, but, but it'll be a great way of really helping new people to town understand what the illustrious history of the town is. And um, the other thing that I would mention as a constraint right now for us is we're looking at public and private sources of money and the public the grants and public sources are for the year, the money comes available during the time period of the anniversary. So that's another reason why an upfront infusion of cash uh, to, to cover preliminary bills is going to be needed because we won't receive money from these grants and um, gifts until the year 2023 sometime. So that's all I wanted to point out. Okay, thank you. All right, if that's all, then we appreciate you coming in and explaining, answering our questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Have a great thank night. night. Good night. Hey, good night. <laughs> good night. Okay, we'll go back to our agenda and uh, I think we've pretty much done. Yeah, we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, did Andrea did have anything more in the way of updates for us on anything, uh, anything happening 
the parking lot. <laughs> no, that's. I think. It, I think while winter is occupying our highway super, as it has been pretty much for the last few weeks, uh, we probably won't see much uh, much progress on that until he and I. He and I were, were were meeting pretty regularly, but winter really makes that difficult. <clears throat> I'll try to catch him for a minute after the department head meeting on Wednesday, but uh, he's he's pretty flat out in uh, the last few weeks with the with the weather. The snow okay. and ice has not been kind to the highway department schedule. Okay. Uh, then let's see. I think that's it. I've added some notes and we've covered those about PBRS. Anything anybody else wants to bring out? Oh, I'm good. I think the uh, select board last week devoted a meeting entirely to the recreation proposals by First Light. Is that right, Andrea? That was a special meeting. Their regular meeting is tomorrow. But yes, the, they had a special meeting just, just to discuss the recreation proposals for the 50-year FERC license for First Light. Yeah. Yes, OK. Mm -hmm. And then um, we had send out a little information too about it. You want to make any comment on that? It was a different location. It was where there was a swimming pool going to be up near a four mile Brook Road, right? Yeah. Oh, you saw the pictures, Lois? Yes. Um, yeah, that's the first that I knew that they were doing swimming or that they had this, I think this is from the state. Um, that the swimming pool area was actually going to be along Four Mile Brook, um, south, well, not south, but west of Main Street. Oh, okay. So when you look at the map, um, there's three houses in there now. So I, I'm not sure if, um, and two of them are definitely older, so older than 72. So I'm not sure if the state was actually planning on taking land or what to do that proposal. But um, um, what I had sent Lois was a picture of a brochure from the state from 1972, I think, 1972, um, having to do with um, a recreation proposal at different points along the river in Northfield. Oh, okay. Yep, and um, what we talked about last week, we did not take a vote, by the way, we just discussed it, was the proposal from the current licensee, First Light, about what they're proposing for recreation in the general area on their current lands in Northfield. Okay. And their current lands in Northfield just um, cause this, I think this is where people were getting confused last week. They own most of, uh, if not all of the riverbanks oh, in yeah. Northfield. Um, and a lot of it abuts either private or state property. And, um, of course they own the land, the property that involves Riverview and Northfield mountain. But for the most part, we're just talking about the strips along the river. So, there was a lot of discussion with um, the recreation chairperson, for example, and I think he was hoping there was something in there that was kind of like Unity Park in Montague, but uh, Montague owns Unity Park. Northfield, the town does not own any land along the river. Oh. So um, I think we're gonna try, and at least I'm going to try and address any of the questions or concerns or um, where folks got confused because it is a lot of info to absorb. I'm going to try and address that tomorrow night at, at the select board meeting. Several years ago, the power company, as we always call it, yeah. um, tried to buy up all the abutting land to the river. And oh. for some landowners, a couple I can remember, held out and said, no. Right. They wouldn't sell. Yeah, yeah, there's a handful there. If, if you look at the maps, 
um, like the shearers own all the way to the river. Yes. And there's a couple, you know, fewer, I can count them on one hand. Oh yeah. That, that own all the way to the river. Otherwise the, the river's edge is owned by First Lake. Yes. Yeah. And then what, um, it was called um, Western Mass Utilities. Western Mass Electric. Western yeah. Mass Electric. Um, and then I think they transferred land to the state. So some of what was thought of as utility land is now um, actually state property. So, okay, any, any okay. questions about that? Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Thanks, Lois. Okay, any, uh, anything else we need to take out? And we'll meet again next week. And then the holiday comes up, right, on the 21st. Okay. Uh, it will take a motion. I make a motion that we adjourn for the evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you, everybody. You're welcome.